Dr. Tequila has returned. He dwells into the unknown with his brand new single, and new Naka came for gold. And a Naka came looking for gold. Many, many thousand years ago. They changed the human DNA. Made the slaves in the gold mine every day. And a Naka came for gold. Richie Barron takes you on a musical journey that unlocks a mystery that is thousands of years old. Was human DNA changed? You people, you sit there, you're in for one big surprise. It's the race from space, and Dr. Tequila is your extraterrestrial tour guide. Listen for the new single, Anunaka Came for Gold, on these stations. Anunaka Came for Gold. Well, hi, well, hi, Richie. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm Krista Clark, and uh, this is Seventh Planet Broadcasting in memory of Gerald Clark. And in the past, Gerald had uh, interviewed Richie, and they both worked together um, with his music. The Anunnaki came for gold, and they've even done a show together. And I know they wanted to do more, but unfortunately, with Gerald not being here anymore, I figure what better way than for me to talk to him. So welcome to the show, Richie. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> Thanks, Krista. You look great today, as usual. Thank you. <laughs> you look, you're looking good, too, and I love your background there. I like the ISIS. That's very nice. It's amazing, the yoga stuff I see you do. If I tried to do that, I'd be in a hospital for days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes with comes with years of practice, you know. And... Yeah, boy, it, it would take a lot of practice, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, and like you said, I, I, I see that. Periodically, that one show I did with Gerald, the interview, is Gerald Clark with Richie Barron. You know, I'm known as Richie Barron, Doctor Tequila, in the music business. So I, yeah, I just watched that the other day again, the, the interview with Gerald and I. It was it was fun. It was good. I watched it too. It was it was really fun and seeing you guys both laugh and get along really well. And yeah, we did. He was like my brother. He, yeah. he really well. I really miss him. I I do. Yeah. He said, yeah, well, everybody does that knew him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people learn from Gerald. He was the genius to me in, in the ancient alien Anunnaki world on and on. He was, he was so complex. A lot of people had a hard time understanding him. True. Because he was so smart. He was a genius. But he confided a lot of things in me, too, when I talked to him back in the past. So, yeah, yeah we all miss Gerald. He was great. Too yeah. bad he didn't get the movie done, the Anunnaki Odyssey Kai movie. But we did get the two videos done. I, I did the first video watching, uh, reading Stitchin, uh, Michael Tillinger. Before I met, before I saw Gerald, I started reading him. And not, I mean, it was so weird. Like Gerald said, it was a coincidence, unbelievable. Right. As soon as he, I put the video up. I wrote the song before I met Gerald. I wrote that song. Anunnaki came for gold, and Deborah, my marvelous attorney wife, made a video of it. Really good one too. It's it's on YouTube. And I had that up online, and Gerald found it like two days after it was put up, and he got a hold of me right away. And it was so, what a coincidence. Like he said, he couldn't believe it. He found that. And we just hooked up immediately. He said, yep, yeah, this is the song I want to put in the uh, the uh, Odyssey Kai movie. So we went from there, but regrettably, it never got finished. I wish we could find somebody to carry on with that movie. Because yeah. there's been a couple of Anunnaki movies that went nowhere. They were, they were nothing like Gerald was trying to do. Now you got, uh, like, Billy... Uh, Carson, Matt LaCroix, some guys like that are putting out a lot of stuff about the Anunnaki these days and doing very well. Matt LaCroix and him are hooked up and they got some great stuff going. Billy Carson, I, you, you can't turn on YouTube without seeing him anymore. He's, a, he's really out there. He's big time. I, I, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for those guys. But I really wish we could get something going again with that movie. If we could find somebody that would continue on with what Gerald was doing, I'm sure he'd be smiling wherever he is because you know he's somewhere. You can't get rid of him. That He's a indomitable character as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 
So I've been doing really well with my radio shows. That's the big thing for me these days. Is I've got, you know, it's not Vagado, it's not anything, it's reality. I've got close to 4 million listeners a week. Wow. I'm on seven days a week, three shows a day. And I'll tell you the times. So if anybody actually wants to go and see what I do, that would be fine. Please. I'm on at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 8 a.m., seven days a week. Wow. And it's on famoushitslive.com. Famous Hits Live, all one word. You can go and hear what I do every day. I got all my music on there. And like I said, like Japan is one of the biggest listeners in the world, believe it or not. I'll tell you about the lowriders thing in a minute, too. Yeah, tell us Japan, about that. Japan, I'm getting close to 50,000 a show. Wow. In Japan. Spain usually follows up next with about forty six or 7,000 a show. So when you start adding them up, all the hours that I'm on a day, it comes like like four million. I I can't even count them anymore. It's it's been phenomenal, and I'm so grateful. It's I never thought I'd get to this point, you know, musically, but it's been fabulous. I've my wife is behind me all the way. And I have a programmer named Saul Biggle. He's in uh he's close to you. He's in Bella, New Mexico. Okay. Which is not I played Tucson a lot back in the day. I played uh, man, this was back in the Mid seventies, I, I I was in the Black Angus chain. Remember that the Black <laughs> Angus restaurants? Yeah. They had bands in every place, up and down from Alaska to Tucson, and I played them all. I was their one of their top artists. Oh wow! Yeah, I would get the records and all the the, the attendance records and all the ones I played in up and down the coast. So yeah, that was a fun days. But Tucson was great. I went up Mount Lemmon. You've been up there, I'm sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, Mount Lemon. I remember the fondue and then all uh, the airplane graveyard. That just blew me away when I first saw that. All those beautiful planes setting out there. I'm an airplane freak. I love airplanes. Oh, like Gerald. He, what, yeah. he, was, he was a CEO in what, what company? Big uh, Lockheed, wasn't it? Light Point and many of them that he worked with. Then he, he quit from that company, right? He didn't like the way the... Uh, the corporate routine was going, so he had to get out of it. He told me, "Yeah, and he often found they were, you know, in a, you know, he they told him, oh, it's commercial, and then later he found out it was usually not the case, and so he was not, you know, not a fan of that, obviously." Yeah, right. So many things we don't even want to get into at that point in time. Right. Uh, yeah. I like to stay on the happy side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we all do. Yeah. Small world we're in, you know. I feel like you're around all the time. I, I do. I I really relate to you and what you do. I I've been really grateful. You've been, you know, nothing but supportive, you know, while Gerald was here and after he's passed, it's carrying on and constantly yeah. pushing, you know, both of the, the videos and um and his message and Odyssey Key and you know, wanting to see that come to fruition. And you know, you never know what the future will bring and, and who will come yeah, into the on. Well, Princess Velata, which is Princess Inanna. Or Isis. You Isis. was the model. You the you were her. You were the every time I see that, watch that video, it plays all the time. It comes on automatically on YouTube TV. That and you came uh, and, uh, Anunnaki came for cold comes on automatically every day. I can't help but hear them all the time. But every time I watch the Princess Pilata, remember I made an acoustic version too. Yeah, I love that the, one. You in the swing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Gerald, yeah. Did, who did all? Gerald did all the artwork on that stuff, right? Gerald did all of it from scratch. I mean, he learned how to animate and created a, everything. It was really amazing if you look did at you it. Did you learn any of that stuff while he was doing it, or a little, a little bit, but nothing in comparison to him. I wish I would have yeah. known. At the yeah. time, my hands were full, and he's like, please learn it. And I was like, well, you know, it's more your thing, but, you know, little do you know that, you know, time is short, so. Yeah, he had a couple of guys who were trying to help him do the animation part of it, but they, they didn't turn out to be all that, what they professed they were. When he had to carry on by himself, but he did some great stuff, animation animation on the, uh, like, the the first man, uh -huh. the, the, what do you call him, the, uh, not, uh they weren't changed into what we are now. What, we're, what they had the characters on there. Yeah, like Neanderthal kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those type of people. He did those really well. I thought. 
Yeah, yeah, he had great. like different People characters. have to watch that. You go to YouTube to Gerald Clark and you can find the uh, all the stuff he did on the Anunnaki animation on Princess Bellata and Anunnaki came for gold. And my wife, Deborah, even did one on Anunnaki came for gold. It, they're all on YouTube. Yeah. So hopefully we'll soon be on there and all the people can see what we're doing these days. Yeah, and, and who knows where it'll be picked up in the future. You know, you never know. Like sometimes things, a uh, seed is planted and later it blossoms. So we never know if, if it'll be at a future time. And I actually had a dream last night that I was holding his screenplay and, and your picture was inside of it. <laughs> so you never know. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> that is strange, funny. man. There's more yeah. than meets the eye on this planet. That's all I got to say. It's That's like, true. well, let's go back and, 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 you know, back in time here a minute. Like I said, when I was young, I started playing guitar and piano and stuff when I was like nine years old. Wow. And I, and I got off into space, you know, and aliens. And then when I was young, wow. but what happened after that was even more profound than just getting off into it. I, I, I built rocket rooms. I had an old shack shed right beside the house where, on this little farm I was raised on. This farm is out in the country, about five miles out of the closest town, which I'll get to when I tell you about what I saw. And uh, I used to not tell anybody. I, after I saw this, what I saw was a UFO swirling over the woods down the railroad tracks. We used to go down there and play at this. There was a creek down there and a huge woods. I mean, it was desolate out in there. You could pass, there was a farm across the field, a big one way over half a mile about over a little valley, you could see it. And then it was their woods down there. They had some cows and stuff that we used to get out and play all the time in this creek and pond. Well, I was working on the their son-in-law, the people that raised me, the Steels, they were called. They were great people. He, he was a carpenter. He lived to be 103 years old. Oh my goodness. Muscle bound dude, boy. He, I mean, he was something else. And Mrs. Steele was a school teacher. And all her, they had three kids, yeah, and they all played instruments. They were all in school bands, all played trombones, pianos. And so she she could play piano too. But you got me playing piano when I was six years old. Oh. But then I got off into the guitars. My dad got me Stella's and Sears, those early guitars I started playing on. But you know, I I, I discovered that. Ladies like guys playing guitars and singing better than they like piano players. <laughs> <laughs> so I stuck with the guitar and it just went through all these years on the road for years, casinos, outdoor concerts, you name it, blah, blah. And I started writing a lot of songs, probably late 70s. I wrote some in while I was still in Dallas. By the way, I started Frank Beard from ZZ Top, their drummer. Oh my God. I started him in the business. He was on the road with me for about probably a year, right before he went with ZZ Top. Now you know what he does these days. I mean, amazing. Don't get any bigger than them. But I, I've always been elated that he was actually my drummer for that length of time out of Dallas, Texas. Incredible. Yeah. And then the writing. I wrote, started writing a lot of songs. When you travel that much, you run into a lot of, I started a book long ago, but I've carried it around for, you know, forever. These yellow pads of paper with what I was going to do as a book, which I never got to, but it ended up on the radio thing takes up so much time now that I got deemed, listen, this story is unbelievable. I got them all. This lady named Luna, L-U-N-A, she's a low rider from East Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And just how this she does it, I don't know. But man, that woman knows every lowrider on earth, and they are everywhere. Oh. When I get, I say, ask Dr. Tequila a question with your picture. They send it into the programmer or me. Now, I've probably got 400 or so compiled now of the lowriders with their cars. Yeah. And they deemed, she deemed me. Out of the clear blue, all of a sudden, she started calling me the lowrider godfather. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I got three radio shows. 
Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights at 8 o'clock on that famous Hits Live uh -huh. .com radio where I'm the lowrider godfather. Wow. And I get, like I said, 50,000, 45,000 worldwide listeners from every country you can imagine. Curla Iceland. <laughs> it goes down to Iceland where they like, well, have like a thousand listeners from Iceland. It's un unbelievable. Oh. I've just been happy about it. I, what can I tell you? Uh, Absolutely. I'm elated. It's, it, I never thought I'd get to this. Point. Yeah, I'm really jacked up. Yeah. Gives me something to do. Yeah, so, well, and it's cool, but you know, with the internet. I don't have to leave this room. I've recorded songs sitting at the kitchen table out here with acoustic guitar that have become requested a hundred times a day on a radio station. Oh, like Mystery Train, old Elvis song, or stuff I've written about uh, Amun Ra and Isis. I oh. wrote a, I wrote a Princess Balata, another song you never heard, oh. called the Princess Balata Suite, and I did it acoustically. That gets uh, gets uh, requested several times. You know, I've got a couple of hundred requests. You can't when you get that many people. Yeah. You get requests. You can't believe the numbers of requests. You know, I was thinking about like um, cymatics oh. and like how you know music and sound healing and how it can affect our structure inside of us. And I was thinking like if you were to listen to your songs, like. The Anunnaki came for gold, or Princess Balata, and and and, sh and sharing about our original history. I wonder what that does internally to our structures, and you know, to awaken people. I hopefully, I, hopefully it does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, Billy Carson and Matt, and those guys. Uh, I don't hear much out of them about ever listening to the song, but if they want to, they can. It's there. Yeah. I've seen it to all of them. I had a couple of guys in Canada made videos. With, with using the song in the background. One guy from uh, Quebec or Alberta, somewhere, but he, he said the Anunnaki actually looked for gold in Canada. They have proof. Wow. So that's his big trip. He's, he's, tr he's trying to make a big video about the Anunnaki looking for gold in Canada. Interesting. And that'll, using, that'll using the Anunnaki came for gold as the uh, track for it. So things like you said, everything happens. It rolls along. You never know what's going to happen. That's right. I mean, I mean, Gerald, he was looking just at the right time, you know, for a song for his movie and looking for Anunnaki. He couldn't quite find the right, you know, anything. And then he found yours. And that's and what he because... couldn't believe. He said it was like automatic. There it was. Yeah. He heaped up and there, there it went, you know. Amazing, man. So how would you, you know, it's interesting because when Gerald was a little boy, he had a very similar UFO experience where he was out living in the country and like kicking walnuts out in the street to crack them. And he looked up and he saw a UFO. And at the time, he didn't know what it was because he, there was an error of force, you know, error. Yeah, he told me. Somewhere told nearby. Me he just thought it was something like that until it wasn't years later that he realized he had, well, he had seen one. So it's interesting that you guys have similarities in your childhood. Yeah, we talked about. I think we talked about that in the uh, uh, briefly in the inter interview we had. Well, he told me that before too. Uh, when I talked to him on the phone or somewhere, he told me when he was like in his teens, early teens, he saw a UFO too. So there we struck it off immediately too. Yeah, like, like me, he said he didn't tell everybody about it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But what, like where I when I saw the UFO, we were. 50 miles of an airport. We didn't even see airplanes out there on that farm. There's never, you know, like airliners, every commonplace. You see them every day going over. And, uh, you know, helicopters. I never saw a helicopter when I was that age, only on television. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't see a real helicopter till I was in my mid-teens after I left that farm, moved in with my aunt. And uh, in Indiana, South Bend, Indiana. Yeah. And as soon as I got out of high school, I hit the road, never looked back. It went on from there. But yeah, Gerald talked, he talked about that in this UFO too. Him and I both hit it off on that as he was yeah. telling me about his, what do you call that thing he played? A didgery? The what didgeridoo? is that? That big long yeah. instrument. He, yeah, yeah. I love to hear that thing. He, he was yeah. pretty good. I don't know what it takes to play that, but it must take a lot of wind. You know, it's a, it's kind of like a vibration. You kind of like, I can play it as well. Like he taught me. Um, and, and it's kind of, you just kind of, it's almost like, you know, when you blow raspberries on a little kid's stomach. Uh, uh, yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. 
You yeah. still got it, I'm sure. Do you have a couple of them or? Yeah, they're no. they're in Mexico right now. I don't have everything here in um in Tucson, but they're at my parents' house. So <laughs> Oh, that's right. They live in Mexico. Yeah. You get down there periodically. Yeah, last year I did quite a bit and I haven't um as much this year. <laughs> good. I know you love I know you love it down there. I love it so much. Yeah. Yeah. We spent many years living there and um so it's it's really in my heart. <laughs> yeah, we think about Mexico ourselves lately. Yeah, properties like Chapala and mm -hmm. in right where the area where you guys you where you lived. Yeah, Gerald and I used to live around there. Yeah, Oaxaca. Where is it? You you lived in what? Oaxaca. Uh, it's called Oaxaca. Yeah, that's where I currently. That's the last place I lived, and my parents are down. Oaxaca. There. Uh -huh. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That beautiful area. It was great. Yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. So now, the beaches and they have it's nice because you get the beaches the mountain and the desert so you get a little bit of everything yeah right right there yeah. your backyard yeah it's really i'm so great. happy that we finally got together again me too you know i was just curious uh like so when you wrote the anunnaki came for gold um did it just come to you was it kind of like a download yeah i did yeah uh, i studied a little bit on the on gerald stuff was so complex Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, Princess Velata, I gleaned a lot of the stuff out of from Gerald, but I would like I said stitching uh -huh. mainly I want this uh, Sumerian text, yeah, deciphering this text and all. That. I've got stitching in the song. I've got the Sumerian text. I've got anything to do with that song about the Anunnaki's. Just about is in that song. Anunnaki came for gold. I read these people that go on and on for hours about the situation and what happened, why they were here. I've got it compressed into this one song that almost everything is in there. Yeah. If, you listen, if they listen to the song, it's on YouTube, produced by Gerald Clark. It's under his name, written by me, Richie Barron, yeah. Dr. Tequila. And it's a pretty, it's kind of a non-threatening way. If, if someone were maybe new to this information, you could listen to it as a song and not have to take hours to, you know, to go into it just as. Yeah, kind of right. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's wonderful. And I love, you know, in the Princess Balata, Mother of You, Mother of Me, and how it tells the story of, you know, our, our ancient. Our yeah, ancient I thought that was one of the main things I gleaned out of there is when uh, I read that and what Gerald said about the Mother of You, the Mother of Me. Yeah. Uh, Princess Balata of the Anunnaki. <laughs> yeah. And he was saying like Balata is like Bella Illy, and it goes back to Ninma and Harsog and Isis and, you know, the mother of humanity. So it's all interconnected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yankee and Enlo and all the boys back in those days. Yeah. We yeah. wonder if everybody keeps wondering if they're still here or coming back or like we said, yet to be seen. Who knows? Yeah, he, he believed they were still kind of working in the background. And it's almost like Gerald, he's not physically here, but we can kind of feel him or, you know, he shows up in dreams or in different ways in people's life. And uh, I know he's here. I feel he's here. I know he's here. Yeah. He, he had an indomitable persona about him. You know, he, he can't disappear. He's got to be somewhere. Yeah. He's around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Gerald. <laughs> hey, Gerald. <laughs> so good to see you. You're the spiviness, what beautiful woman, I tell you that. You have really done a job in life. Thanks. Are you still doing the vegan shows or? You know, I haven't, you know, after, it's funny because he would be like, haven't you done enough of these? And at the time I was very committed to it. Like, no. And then when he passed, you know, I kind of just gave myself a break to grieve yeah. everything and and I haven't picked them back up really. I've done kind of yoga and I went to India and done some different things, but um, I haven't fully gotten back into it. And um, yeah, so I just kind of, I'm going with the flow. Like right now this feels natural to do these uh, podcasts and uh, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. The Megan cookbook you put out, we have it. Oh. That is so well done. That's about the best looking, best cookbook. It's the picture and everything you got in it. Or uh, Deborah, you still uses that cookbook. Oh, thank you. I think that's the best one I ever saw. Well, I haven't seen many vegan cookbooks, but that one <laughs> is primo. I guarantee it's well worth it if anybody can. Can they still get it? Yeah. Yeah, it's still available. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, it's neat because it was like um, it was produced throughout different parts of our journey. So part of it's in America, the rest of it's in Mexico and different places we lived. And so it's kind of special. It holds a lot of, you know, different locations that we live together. Yeah. 
and he really was the one that pushed me on my path yeah. to ever do any of that. So, you know, we're really thankful yeah. to him. Yeah. Um, so if maybe if you were to say if someone didn't know anything about the Anunnaki, um, and what would you what would you recommend to them? Like where would you recommend getting started or or well, what go to, go to look up Stitchin mm -hmm. and Cheryl. And, uh, and Billy Carson is good on the Anunnaki. He's got a lot of videos out about him now, all kinds. Yeah. Nick Carson is doing really well. But I think Cheryl's a place to start, as far as I'm concerned. Those guys, to me, all learned from him. Yeah. They give him credit periodically. They do. So, yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. I love their They tribute. should. Yeah. 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 The tribute they did to him after he passed, it was really sweet and really nice. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I mean, it's kudos to them. They're doing amazing in their careers, him and Matt and, you know, the others. So it's, it's yeah. 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 Um, it, you know, I was wondering, are there any, um, like spiritual practices you and Deborah like, or like going in nature or anything that, that you guys do? Well, I'm not much of a nature hiker because I'm kind of limited with my bad knees and, you know, I'm limited to where I can go and what I do. But yeah, I'm, I'm as, I'm uh, about as spiritual as anybody could get, I guess, for what I, the way I do it. Yeah. You know, I know there's much more than meets the eye here. I, I'm psychic. I know when somebody's going to call me usually. Or I, I used to be way more into the psychic stuff. I changed. I saw that UFO when I was 11 years old. I became more of a, a into the music more. And I became kind of a, a loner for a while because I didn't tell anybody about that. You know, you see a swirling disc above the woods a quarter of a mile down a railroad tracks where I went to play all the time. And uh, it affects you. There's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. So as far as the spirituality of religion, I don't have a religion. Okay. I just live life the best I can. Yeah, I think that's the best way. And then you're kind of more open to everything in a way when you live that way. Well, I like to do things for people. I mean, it's great that I can you ask Dr. Tequila, if I can help somebody with a suggestion from my time I've been on this planet, yeah. uh, me, that's great. I really appreciate that, that I can do that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And you and Deborah just uh, celebrated an anniversary recently. Do you have any advice for people like on staying together <laughs> or anything that's worked for you guys? <laughs> well, yeah. Deborah and I have been together 27 years as of uh, March the 9th, the Ides of March. And uh, I don't know. We just hit it off from the first time we met. That was it. You know, and I've never been with anybody else I ever wanted to be. So that all worked out great for us. Oh, that's beautiful. And if you have any, do you have any advice for like any of the younger generation, or is there anything you want to say before you go? Yeah, don't do something just because they tell you to these days. Think, evaluate it. Check it out. Look online. Look things up. See what's going on. Don't just do things because they're trying to control you into doing them. Do what you think is right. And if you think if you do it when your mind, what you think is right, it usually will be. It, I, it always has for me. It works. Everything works for me. Yeah, that's good advice. Well, it's been really nice chatting with you and, and thank you so much for coming on and you're more than welcome to come anytime. And uh, and I just really appreciate you and what you're doing and um, and tell us one more time where we can listen to your music. Yeah. Famous Hits Live, all one word, dot com. www.famoushitslive.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Richie. I really yeah. appreciate it. Hey, we'll have to do this again soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we love you. All right, Krista. All right, you and Deborah. Bye. Take care. I'll see you soon. Okay. okay. Bye. Please visit our website stores where you can purchase the always popular Starfire Gold Alchemical Elixirs, Colloidal Silver, as well as our books in English and Spanish, digital and paperback, and audiobooks too. Gravity Body Academy courses and events can also be accessed in the online store. Purchasing our products and services allows us to continue serving you and the broader community. Thank you for your support.